She never pushed. She, you know, unbeknownst to me, on nights when I would pass out, uh, she would go in the closet and pray for me. And and all and all she ever prayed was, you know, just for him to you know, get off that stuff, just to get off that stuff, not to be saved, not to be anything, not to become <laughs> the Jesus freak that I am. None of that stuff. Just just clean him up a little bit. I mean, she was. I mean, she even prayed for a low bar. Um, <laughs> You know, she wasn't, you know, it's like, if you, you know, if you could just make him, you know, <laughs> presentable, it'd be awesome. <laughs> um, and so, of course, uh, you know, I, I'm trying and I'm trying and I'm, and I'm not doing very good. And one Christmas, you know, she leaves out a study Bible, but then she leaves out this book by Dr. James Dobson, and it's called Straight Talk to Men. And I start reading this thing, and all of a sudden, and, and I, you know, I, I'm sure you know Dr. Dobson. I've never met the man, and it, it, he's... If I ever meet him, he's somebody that I always go, I'm not sure if I would just give him a big hug or I punch him because <laughs> I read this thing and I just, I've never been so, you know, nicely and sweetly dressed down. But like, you know, like, he, I mean, he was just letting me know what a, just a horrible human being, <laughs> what horrible man I was, but saying it in the nicest way. <laughs> And I, and, and it just, I mean, it, 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 it just, it caught me and I just thought, my goodness, I've got to, yeah. I've got to try to get a hold of this. Mm -hmm. And then finally, it was one night, I'm on the couch, and again, I've, I've cut off just about everything, but I've, you know, it's just like, well, it's just Friday nights now. <laughs> and, you know, my son and I at that time, you know, he's now two years old, so I've, I've missed my nine month bar, mm -hmm. I've missed his one year bar, and now he's two years old and I still haven't, gotten myself together. Um, cut down, but I'm not where I need to be. And uh, I'm on the couch and I'm half in the bag. And he and I, you know, at that time, and, and we still do it now, it's just different, but it's, uh, you know, a pizza and cookie night. <laughs> and as I'm half in the bag, he's crawling on me and I hear him, you know, out of his little voice say, Daddy's tired. And it hit me that finally at two years old, he can see it now. You can see who I am, and 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 uh, and who I've allowed myself to become, and uh, and to this day, I mean, I, I tell him now, I mean, he's 15, he's 16, and I say, boy, you ruined me. You know, I, <laughs> you know, I was so tough before you, and now, you know, every time I talk about it, it uh, it cuts me to the quick because I it, I, it was, and and nobody knew about it. It was a private moment uh, between us, but I knew that I was failing him. And I knew that the only way he was going to have any idea, and I'm hearing Dr. Dobson here, the only way you're, he's going to know how to be a man is by, by seeing it in you. And I, and I was uh, uh, desperately falling short. And that was the night that I, I, I did. I, I, you know, I cried out to the Lord, and it's just, please, you know, please. Uh, and it was, it was, it was, you know, and that's why I ended up writing the book. It was my looking at myself in the mirror. And, and having to be honest with myself and say, Mr. You need, you know, you are, you know, it doesn't matter, all that other stuff, all that other man stuff that you did means absolutely nothing if you fail in this area.